Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's time for our weekly mod collection demo shop update. So last week we had some technical difficulties, the site wasn't loading. This week I thought they had fixed it because right at their normal time everything was there, the pages were loading super fast, I could get to all the stuff, and then a minute and a half passes and then bam, back to the old stuff. So they're still working out the kinks, but we're getting slightly better. <laughs> At least it wasn't down for a half hour this time. But I've got to say, this week was actually pretty cool. This is what's left over on the day of recording, but let's see what we've missed. Starting off, we have another one to add to the Cosmic Stew collection. A couple of weeks back, we had a new SG and a Les Paul. Both of them were then flipped on reverb, and the very first update to the mod collection also had a Cosmic Stew. But this time, we see it on a Flying V. Now, out of all the ones that we've seen, I think this is probably the lamest one out of all of them. However, it's cool that they did it on a Flying V, and maybe the photos just don't do it justice. Like, if you adjust the contrast a little bit on this, you can definitely see it's got that cosmic swirl finish going on here. Obviously, it's the headstock that they got right, because it's got the slightly lighter colors that really steals the show from far away. But it appears they use like a slightly tinted clear pick guard so you can still see the finish underneath it, since Flying V pick guards cover up a whole bunch of their body. But what's most interesting about this one is the electronics. We have three humbuckers in here, you don't see that too often. And then they added another control, so you could wire it two volumes, two tones, like a normal three pickup guitar, or you can have three volumes on each like they normally do when they modify things. But then they black chromed out all the hardware pickup covers and all that. But for me, I was having a hard time identifying what did this start life as? Because at first I thought, okay, one of those 70s style flying Vs. Judging by this photo, the neck does not stick up. The fretboard is flush, so that's not the case. If we look at our serial number, that thing is from 2013. So if we're being honest here, it could have just been a regular 67 style flying V, you know, something similar to this. I'm not sure if the Faded series lasted that long, but that's the first one that came to my head, was this limited edition three humbucker flying V that was part of the Faded series. But those were done circa 2008, so it couldn't have been that. So a little bit of a mystery behind that one, but kind of cool. Next up, we've got Roasted Kale Metallic. Kind of a cool Finnish name, even though I don't like kale all that much, but I like fruit and vegetable themed guitars. So besides the black chrome hardware, clear knobs, aged lacquer, there's not too much special about this one. Except for the fact that they did the full-on gloss refinish. That's a nice one. So these are normally $26.99. They want about a $300 premium, which is kind of a shame when you lose your flame top, but whatever. I suppose I can see why that one hasn't sold at the time of recording. But take a look at this one, Les Paul Special Persimmon Magic. In case you don't know what a persimmon, this is what they look like. But it's basically just like a sparkle orange finish. I really like the knobs they have on here. They're golden and they've got the pearl toppers. Looks like we have metal pickup covers on here to match the gold. Then we've got the gold tuners and we even get the gold truss rod cover. Wow, they were asking a premium on that thing. But it was a full sparkle refin, so it made sense for someone. Here's another one to add to our lefty collection. Dark Iced Tea Satin. So poor lefties, they, they always mess with their pick guards, right? I talked about how sometimes they'll do the double pick guard on them when a lefty might not want that. This time, they have no pick guards at all, so you can make your own decision. But I really like these dark red burst finishes. I wish Gibson would bring them out on more things. But the true shocker on this one is the back, because they left that alone. I'm wondering if this is why it made it to the demo shop. The burst is just a little bit too big in this area. So it almost looks like what they did here is they just sprayed a transparent red layer over top of the original finish to get this effect. And I totally get the iced tea vibes that they're talking about from that. This 50 standard P90 might not look like much from the top. Kind of a questionable decision to put witch hat knobs on this model. But it's a dark back, and not just a normal dark back either, that's like a black back. Normally dark backs are kind of like a very dark molasses color. Maybe that's what this is and the photos didn't really show it too well, but that was definitely an interesting one because a dark back isn't normally offered. And they were not asking a premium for that, they actually give you a discount. Cool Lagoon has to be one of my favorites from this week. That is just an awesome finish with a perfect pairing of a flame top. Kind of reminds me of the Goro Yudo signature Les Paul that we talked about in this episode, but all the modifications on that one were just tasteful. Although maybe we could have got away with a blue Gibson logo up here. But then you swap over to the back and you're like, huh. <laughs> I don't quite fully understand this one, so it's like a very dark maroon color here and then light red, and then they put the clear back plates on it. Perhaps this is referencing something who knows. And I don't know, this one was pretty good too, so I'm sure you guys are silver bursted out. And normally gold hardware does not look the best on silver burst, because you traditionally see chrome or nickel. But the mad lads at the mod collection, they found a way to make it work by giving it white plastics. 
So we're talking clear, crisp white, none of this cream stuff. So it really pops out, kind of reminds me of the old Celebrity series from the early 90s. And the pairing of gold and white just really makes this work. However, when you switch it to the back, you start to see why gold doesn't mix with silver burst all that well. At least not until it ages. Why they put a brown backplate back here instead of another white one here and there and get rid of the medallion, I'm not quite too sure. Then we got Sparkling Lime, another fruity flavored one. 2600 was quite a premium. Kind of similar to the Persimmon, it's just sparkle lime green. And you've got the clear back plates on this one as well, but that's such a missed opportunity for Black Moto. That would look so good on this guitar, especially pairing it with the black chrome hardware. Like they could have even put that on the top of the guitar as well. So those were the most interesting ones. Here's a lightning round of the other 10. SG Modern in dark green metallic satin. It's just a custom finish on an SG Modern that came out a little bit dark. SG Standard in ebony. That just got modified tuners and apparently has a dark green pick guard that's just hard to see. SG Special in ebony. Looks like I might have got some gold parts, some pearl tip tuners and knobs, and interestingly enough, an SG Diablo truss rod cover. An SG Modern that played with monochromatic colors for pickups, bridge, and tailpiece. Another pearl tipped SG. An SG Special with an awesome white finish. A red Les Paul Special with some change knobs and hardware. A Honey Burst that doesn't look like a Honey Burst. A hard to see Swamp Brass Sparkle Finish on a 50s Les Paul Standard. And lastly, we have this modified ES-335. Not a bad week from the mod collection. Now let's check out the demo shop. We had a good 30 or 40 guitars this week with a few special finishes. Start with Gunmetal Green. It's not often that they throw a bone into the demo shop like this. Usually all the custom colors are mod collection now. It appears this is a satin finish, but it's got an interesting army vibe to it. But then we go from that to obnoxiously bright Les Paul 70s Deluxe Cherry Sunburst. Not much more to say about that one besides the cool wood grain. There was a Murphy Labs Ultra Light Age TV Yellow SG Junior. TV Yellow is just an awesome finish, especially on Les Paul and SG Juniors. You don't find these too often in the demo shop. And I'm still honestly confused why aged guitars even end up here. They must be like customer returns or something. This true honey burst got gold hardware, which really pops that finish and makes it look way different than normal. It looks like we even got cream colored backplates. The 61 SG standard kind of threw me for a loop. They call it vintage cherry, and generally these things on their website, they're like bright in your face red. But this thing looks sunbathed, like all the red aniline dyes have been bled out from it, so it's just like this kind of slightly red mahogany color to it. It has a very cool vintage vibe to it. As you can see, the neck is a little bit darker than the body. It's like maybe they didn't mix the paint well enough or something before they sprayed it. I'm not sure. It's got a cool vibe though. But I was reading down here. Normally they say, yeah, you got scuff scrapes, blah, 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 but crack repair at butt. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're even talking about because they didn't take any photos of it. I'm assuming there was like some sort of like a centerpiece crack right here that they repaired, but I'm not entirely too sure. But that's the reason why it's priced at $13.99 when these things are normally $2,000 today. So depending on the severity of that crack and repair, it might be a good deal for someone. But I feel like they should really put that in the title because that's pretty easy to miss. This week they dropped a whole bunch of slash guitars on Tuesday. Here was a pretty nice looking November burst from the collection at a $600 discount. Here was a 57 gold top VOS in the double gold finish that we've been talking about quite often. This is just a regular colored back, but they did this one extra by giving it gold hardware everywhere. Now I really wish they would have left the covers on these pickups though, because then it would look gold and pearl. Then we got this Les Paul Tribute in Satin Ebony. I like where they were going with this kind of spooky Halloween vibes, but at the end of the day, it just kind of looks like a mess in my opinion. I think it's the gold hardware that makes this look off. I mean, this photo looks strange because of the black nut, so it just makes everything <laughs> blend together. And this was definitely my favorite demo shop offering as far as uniqueness goes. Candy Apple Green 57 reissue. The only thing I wish is it would have had a dark back, not like a black black back, but we're talking like that molasses color because then that probably would have been a must review. But you want to see something even cooler? It looks like this did indeed start life as a gold top. So this is green over gold, which means as you play and wear through the finish eventually over the years, you'll start to see the gold come through, which would probably look pretty cool. Cooler than most of the painted over series H relic jobs because you don't see green and gold too often. Slap a little leprechaun decal on the back here and I'd be happy. Then this 50 standard, I mean, it doesn't look like too much, but when you get to the back of the headstock, I really like that 
fuzzy wood grain that they've got going on there. It's like a very weak flame and or quilt. But now for the ones that sold. All right, so there were some really expensive guitars that dropped with the new Slash collection. They had not one, not two, but three of the Brazilian Dream 1958 reissues. Let's do a quick little recap here. In 2018, Gibson came out with this thing. It was $13,000 brand new. That's the year they had to file for bankruptcy and they get all restructured and all that. They thought we cannot fail with Slash. So they did these kind of dark burst 58 reissues with Brazilian rosewood fretboards. That's what makes these special and the fact that they were signed and hand numbered by Slash. They also got a special lift in case that has the Scully decal on it. And then let's be honest here, a really lame trucker style hat with the same crooked logo. Slash is known for the top hat, and they've already given the top hat as case candy on one of his other limited edition releases, but this is a $13,000 guitar. Needless to say, this was the biggest flop of Gibson Slash history. Now you can argue the double neck was also a flop, but at least that was a recreation of an actual guitar that he was known for using. This was just something they made up. I mean, generally R8s look on the Gibson website, they're like 5,000 bucks brand new. Why pay all that premium? It just didn't make sense. So these things sat at dealers forever. Eventually, many dealers ended up returning them to Gibson or all of them didn't actually even sell. And around the time of the Slash 4 album coming out, they popped these Brazilian dreams back on. And out of the Gibson garage, they started to fish around like somewhere between like seven to 15 of these things to their regular buyers. And a lot of those guys, they bought them up, thought, oh yeah, I can flip this for 20 grand. <laughs> and then realized, no, the Brazilian dream was a flop. They are hard to sell. So if you're wondering why some of these started to show up and so many of them after years of nothing, yeah, that's why. Don't pay 19, don't pay 22. Maybe you're getting towards there because that's technically below retail value, but these are not $20,000 guitars. And Gibson proved that. They had one for 12. I was surprised these sold as fast as they did. They had another one for 11 and a half. That one sold. And then there was this one at 11,000. I was tempted to pick this up because that's almost the price I, I would consider paying just because I thought I could probably move it and break even. I would like to review this big massive flop of a guitar. But then I looked over here at the Reaver price guide and it looks like somebody did get lucky and sell one for 16,000. Maybe it had a good number. But before that, these were all like 9,000, 8,000. So you really wanna be between like 10 and 12 on this. So these were good offerings by the Gibson demo shop. But unfortunately, I decided not to go for it. And if you bought one of these and now you're upset with me saying it's the worst slash signature, just remember, sometimes history looks back fondly on things that sold terribly. But those are now out of stock on the Gibson website, so I think Gibson's pretty well sold through them. They also had a pretty nice Anaconda burst with these new slash models, 2400 bucks. Not surprising that one sold. There's also a Victoria, which is a dark back gold top. You can check out this review and demo if you need to learn more. And then I didn't even realize they made left-handed Victorias, but apparently they do. This 50 standard gold top had an interesting back I wanted to share with you. I can't tell if that's quilt and or flame figuring or if it's just wood grain, but it's like a nice fuzzy jacket or something. And then I've got one more I want to share with you, but let's go to the European demo shop real quick. At the time of recording, they didn't update this week. So maybe we'll catch them next time. But I saved the best one for last. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Gibson. <laughs> they got crazy on this thing. All right, so it started off as an acoustic guitar, right? It might have had some sort of a piezo system in it already. But then these crazy guys not only added one real pickup into it, but they put an EMG in an acoustic guitar. I can't wrap my head around that because it's an EMG 81 pickup and there's a legit toggle switch on the lower bout. You don't see that on a acoustic guitar ever. Now, sometimes you'll find knobs on them, but this thing is just so very, very strange. It's got the candy cane striping on the neck. It's got the rosewood back and sides. It's got the Gibson Mother of Pearl wording on the headstock. Mini Grovers, this is just one of those guitars where it's like, yeah, you did it, Gibson. <laughs> All they really need to do on this thing is add a Floyd Rose now, and it's just some modernized thing. It probably actually sounds quite nice. It's not as ridiculous as it seems. But let's just say I'm glad I don't pay attention to the demo shop anymore because I might have had to have picked that thing up because they didn't ask too much for that. Like a brand new one right here, which is a lower grade version with the walnut back and sides that doesn't have the fancy inlays and whatnot. 
but it didn't seem like that bad of a price for something so crazy. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.